What's up guys? I want to show you a little quick tip in this video and that is how you create snippets in Visual Studio Code and it can be really handy where you're for example creating a, a lot of React components. You can have this snippet that will scaffold it out for you. So let's get started. First of all you should open up Visual Studio Code and then you have a menu here in the code menu and preferences you select something that's called user snippets. You can create snippets for different languages. Uh, in this case, I'm going to create a new global snippets file that will be available in the global scope. Uh, and we can call it uh, awesome snippets. Uh, it will tell you some uh, default stuff here, how you should do things. I will just delete this one now. You can read it yourself if you want to do that later when you create this. So I'm starting from scratch here. So inside of these curly braces, you create your snippets. And first, we have a row here that will name our snippet. And I will create a React uh, uh, stateless functional component. Then you have a colon, and then you have curly braces. This is a JSON file, so it follows the JSON syntax. Then we have something that's called scope. And here you set the scope of where you want your snippet to appear. And in my case, it's going to be JavaScript React. Don't know why it's complaining here. Yeah, that's because I haven't written those yet. Okay. And then we have a comma. Then we have the prefix, colon. And this is the prefix that you want to use when you call this uh, snippet. And in my case, it's going to be fcomp. We have a comma. And then we have something that's called the body, and it's inside of the body that you write your actual code that you want to appear in this snippet. And this is an array, and we can start creating our code that we want to appear in this snippet. So we have quotes, and then import React from React, just the usual React stuff, like so, and a comma, and we have the next line, and here I want an empty line. So I do it like that. I have uh, just an empty quote here. Then another quote, another line. I create my component here. And in your snippets, you have a way to mark things that you want to edit at the same time. So for example, I want this component to have a special name. And I also want to put this special name in the return statement and also in the export statement. And then I can do a dollar sign and curly braces. And then I put a one here. That's my first tab stop that I want for this one. I'll show this in a second when I try out the snippet and it will be easier to see how this works. So component name, you can have whatever you want here. Yeah, we can just actually just type name. And then we end it with the curly braces. And then we continue on creating our component, just as usual here. It's an arrow function, and I have a div. And then inside of this div, I want it to default to the name. So then I use the same syntax here. I have the dollar sign, curly braces, a one. That's my first tab stop, and name. And then I end it with a div, okay? And then I have another empty row. And I export default, and then I want the name again. So dollar sign, curly braces, a one, and name. Like so. And I end it with a comma. And here I need another comma, and we need one last thing here, and that's to set the description. And uh, yeah, create a React. Stateless functional component like that. And that's our snippet. And you can create as many snippets as you want inside of this. You just make a comma here. It's regular JSON, as I said. So you can create another one down below here. You can just paste this in and you can create it here. Uh, and I can actually do that. Uh, this is complaining because it has the same name. So I will change this to a React stateful functional functional 
component, all right? And we're going to have the same scope for this one. And this one, I want to prefix with FS comp. So I have the body here, and I, of course, want to import usestate, as this is a functional component snippet. I have to change this, so I cut this out, create the curly brace, because I can't make an implicit return here, as I'm going to have state in it. I create an empty line, and then I want this to appear two steps in on the row below that. So I create my state, state, set state, equals use state, like so. Then I have another row, and that one is going to be empty. Then I want to have my return statement. Return, and then I have my div. And we can also set where we want our tab to end. We want our cursor to end up somewhere when we have tabbed through everything in this snippet. And you can do that by typing dollar sign and a zero, and this is where the position of your cursor will be when you have filled out everything in this component. So this is how that works. And we want to end it with a curly brace and, of course, a coma. It's a little bit tricky here. <laughs> it's easy to miss something. And we export it as that. And yeah, this, this should be it. This should be a stateful component. So you save this file. I've already created this file, so I'm not going to save mine. But we save it and we can try it out in a file. And this step now, it's really important because we have set it to scope to JavaScript React. You have to have that selected down here, JavaScript React in your document, otherwise it won't show up. And then you can just type fcomp, for example, and this is the component. And as you can see, as I mark this with the tab stop, you can see that it has marked all the three component names for me. I actually named this component name in my other file. So it's the same as the name that I did in this one. And you can see this is really handy because I can type in what I want this component to be named and it will change all over the place here. Awesome component. So that's great. So that's our snippet. And then we had another snippet that I called fscomp. So we can call this awesome component. And I fill this out, and now when I tab, you can see that my cursor is where I put that dollar sign and the zero is great. So I can just continue typing there, and this is great. So this was a little quick tip. I use it all the time when I scaffold out React components. I hope you enjoyed this video, and make sure to subscribe if you want to get more tips and tutorials.